fair Hippolyta, a nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days bring in another moon, but oh, how slow methinks this old moon wanes. She lingers my desires, like a stepdame to a dowager, long withering out a young man's revenue. <laughs> Four days will quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow new bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our solemnities. Mm. Go, Philistrate. Stir up the Athenian youth to merriments. Awake the pert and nimble spirit of mirth. Turn melancholy forth to funerals. The pale companion is not for our pomp. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword, and won thy love doing thee injuries. But I will wed thee with another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with reveling. Happy be, Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I, with complaint against my child, my daughter, Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius, my noble lord. This man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander, and my noble and my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes, and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sung with feigning voice verses of feigning love, and stolen the impression of her fantasy with bracelets of thy hair, rings, gourds, conceits, Knacks, trifles, nosegays, sweetmeats, messengers of strong prevailment in unhardened youth. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And my gracious duke, be it so she will not hear before your grace, consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens, as she is mine. I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law, immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid, to you your father should be as a god. One that composed your beauties, yea, and one to whom you are but as a form in wax, by him imprinted it within his power, to leave the figure or disfigure it. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself he is, but in this kind wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father looked but with my eyes. Rather your eyes must with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, nor how it may concern my modesty in such a presence here to plead my thoughts. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, examine well your blood. Know of your youth, question your desires, whether if you yield to your father's choice you could endure the livery of a nun. For I, to be in shady cloister mewed, to live a barren sister all your life, chanting faint hymns to the cold, fruitless moon. Thrice blessed they that master sow their blood to undergo such maiden pilgrimage. But earthlier happy is the rose distilled, than that which withering on the virgin thorn grows, lives and dies in single blessedness. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will yield my virgin patent up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me for everlasting bond of fellowship, upon that day, Either prepare to die, 
for disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius, as he would, or on Diana's altar to protest for I austerity and single life. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield thy crazy title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Scornful Lysander, truly hath my love, and what is mine, my love shall render him, and she is mine, and all my right of her I do estate unto Demetrius. I am my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his. My fortunes every way is fairly ranked, if not with vantage as Demetrius's. And, which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch it to his head, made love to Nader's daughter, Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes. Devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry, upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof, but being over full of self-affairs, my mind did lose it. But Demetrius, come, and come, Aegeus, if you shall go with me. I have some private schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia, look, you arm yourself to fit your father, your fancies to your father's will or else the law of Athens yields you up, by which no means we may extenuate to death, or to a vow of single life. Come, my Hippolyta, what cheer, my love. Demetrius and Aegeus, go along. I must employ you in some business against our nuptial, and, and confer with you of something nearly that concerns yourselves. With duty and desire we follow you. <laughs> 